Hi, I'm Matt from Hack Mix Reality, and in this video, I'm going to take you through my process for streaming and recording Job Simulator in Mixed Reality. Job Simulator was a launch title for the HTC Vive back in 2016, so it's an older title now, but it's been a launch title for every subsequent headset that has been launched, so that has contributed to its continued success. Despite even the launch trailer being shot in Mixed Reality and Get Good Gaming doing a series of well-polished videos, Mixed Reality content for the game remains scarce, mainly because creating this content remains difficult. The majority of videos out there are produced by a team of people, which of course raises the barrier to entry for something that's already pretty niche. And that additional barrier to entry is something that can stop people if they just want to jump on and start streaming. I'll take you through now the steps and software that I use in order to create videos for Job Simulator in Mixed Reality, which hopefully can make the whole process easier and more reliable. Although first time setup is a bit of a process, after that it should take about five minutes to get up and streaming each time. On screen now is a list of the software that I have installed to make this all work for me. The order of events in which you do things isn't super strict, but it's not super permissive either. So if you find a better way of doing things that's good for you, that's brilliant. Let me know down in the comments below if you find any optimizations to the process or if you think anything can be done better here. So let's jump in and see what it takes to get all of this working. So what is it that we're looking to actually achieve here? Firstly, we want to have Job Simulator show us the mixed reality view. This is the four quadrant view that shows the foreground, the background and your headset view. Then we want to synchronize or calibrate the real camera with the virtual camera. This is so that the actions I take in the real world line up with the ones in the virtual world. Finally, we want to composite the action from Job Simulator with my camera to place me inside the scene. So the first thing we want to do is to try and get that quadrant view to be shown by the game. The first thing we're going to do is to make sure that we've got a different version of the game installed compared to what the latest version is. Although I've never really found Job Simulator to be very buggy, just be aware that you're not going to have perhaps all the latest features like subtitles available to you in the game when you do this. In order to choose between the different builds or betas in Steam, right click on Job Simulator in your library and then go to Properties. From there, you've got the betas menu. There are a total of four builds available to you, of which I'll address three of them. The none option means you're not subscribed to a beta. This was build number 4583 at the time of writing. In my testing, I've not been able to get the latest version to switch to the mixed reality mode. If anyone has managed to get this latest version on Steam to provide the mixed reality output, I'd be really interested to hear in the comments, as I've not managed to find it through extensive searching, and it would shortcut several of the upcoming steps. Next one I'll touch on is the Indexes Here build, which is number 4079. This was released alongside the Valve Index and importantly the Knuckles controllers. This version had the Index controllers in the right position and enabled finger tracking so you could finally flip off JobBot. As we go back in time to this build, it's now possible to bring up the Mixed Reality Quadrant view, but the camera is locked to a fixed position which starts off in the ground in the middle of the face space. This might work for fixed camera setups and if there are enough comments requesting it I'll look into creating a video in how to do that as well. But I believe even if you're a solo creator that having your camera tracked is the gold standard and I'll be providing a separate video on that as to my reasoning behind that. That brings us to the GFX testing branch which will allow us to bring up the quadrant view and also to track the camera. This is build number 2309, but despite being considerably older, it's still after the infinite overtime update, and I don't think there was any significant content updates after this point. So to continue, you'll need to choose the GFX testing branch, close this property page, and then update Job Simulator. Hi, this is Matt from Hackmix Reality, and today I'm going to tell you how to turn your controllers on. But joking aside, the order in which you turn on your controllers is important in this version of Job Simulator. In this build of the game, the order in which you turn on your controllers determines which is your right hand. If you're using the Vive ones still, then this doesn't really matter as they are, of course, ambidextrous. However, when using practically any other tracked controller, you'll want to turn on the right controller first and then 
the left controller the first time you turn on SteamVR. The next step in getting set up is to make sure that your real world controllers line up with your virtual controllers. Although alternatives exist, I find Live by far and away the easiest way to calibrate my real life camera with my virtual camera and make sure that everything lines up in my virtual space. If you're interested in creating mixed reality content, you're probably already well aware on how to calibrate controllers. But if not, there's some great tutorials out there. I've linked one up in the card up there. I've also put a link to download Live down in the description below if you haven't already got it. I'd suggest you complete controller calibration before you launch the game. Job Simulator doesn't have direct Live integration, and I've found that on occasion, if you try and calibrate your controllers whilst in the game, it can crash either Job Simulator the live compositor, or both. Your mileage, of course, may vary. For mixed reality capture, live has two main functions, calibration of camera position, and also to do the compositing to put you in the scene with the virtual environment. The quickest and easiest way to get up and running from here is to then launch the game from live. This will allow you to remove the background from your camera image and also do the compositing. All you should then need to do is to hook up the output from Live to OBS and off you go. Just for full disclosure here, I do something a little more exotic by using OBS directly to do my compositing and image capture. This gives me a little bit of extra control over the output. From the capture menu in the Live compositor, choose Job Simulator from the list and then choose the resolution that you'll want, be wanting to run it at. As each quadrant takes up uh, a quarter of the screen, you'll need to set each dimension of your resolution to half of that that your monitor is able to output. So on my 1080p screens, I would need to choose a target resolution of 960 by 540. Now as this is an older title, in order to get the quadrant view to actually work, you'll need to choose the backup legacy support option from the Live Compositor. In your Steam VR status window, you'll then see the Live Virtual Tracker turns into a Live Virtual Vive Wand, Regardless of how you composite the final output, you'll need to do this step in order to get the quadrant view up. Pressing Sync and Launch should then start Job Simulator in Mixed Reality View. You should also see the Live Compositor provide the Mixed Reality output. There are effectively two conditions that need to be met in order for Job Simulator to provide you with a Mixed Reality output. The first of which, as we've just noted, is that we need to have that third controller attached to the system. The second is that there needs to be a file called external camera CFG located in the job simulator folder. For any reason, if you want to go back to normal output when you've got a third controller attached, you'll need to go into the job simulator folder to remove this file. Now that the game is set up and you're ready to stream, there's just a couple of things that you may want to be aware of. Firstly, once you've launched job simulator, you'll want to entirely avoid moving the job simulator window. If, for example, you accidentally snap that to the top of the screen to maximize it, you will lose sync between Live and Job Simulator. Worst case scenario here is that it doesn't sync back up when you unmaximize it. Is unmaximize a word? Secondly, avoid the Steam VR system menu. Pressing the menu button seems to disconnect the virtual controller and therefore kicks you out of the mixed reality view. It comes straight back uh, when you come out of the Steam VR system menu, but it looks way ugly when it's up there. If you can hide it behind a B right back screen or something like that, then I'd suggest you do so. So now you're in game with everything lined up and everything tracked, right? Right. Well, maybe, but maybe not. If you're using the Vive ones that the game was originally designed with in mind, then everything should be fine, your hands should be lined up, and everything should be great. However, if you're not using those, then your hands may of course be at all kinds of wacky angles. First port of call is to sort this out. A utility that exists that can be used to help here is called OpenVR Input Emulator. It's created by the same developer who initially created OpenVR Advanced Settings, uh, which I'll also be using later. We'll need to manually line up where our hands are now in the virtual and real worlds again. However, this point we have a fixed point of reference around which we can now rotate and offset those hands. Although applying the right offsets to your hands will need to be done each time you restart Steam VR, luckily OpenVR Input Emulator allows you to save presets so this can be done in a matter of seconds. So let's have a look at how we then go about lining these hands up. 
Normally, you'd access this through the Steam VR system menu, but as we've learned previously, opening up the Steam VR system menu then stops the mixed reality output, which means that you won't be able to see where your hands are in relation to the real world. Luckily, OpenVR Input Emulator has a desktop view that you can use to then run this without having to access it via the Steam VR system menu. Look for the Start Desktop Mode batch file within the installation directory. Once you've got it open, choose the device corresponding to one of your controllers and click the Device Offsets button. Click to enable offsets, and then we can start playing around with the middle section called Driver from Head Offsets. These are the settings that I'm pretty happy with for my index controllers, and I've also put the values in the description for you if you want to copy and paste. Save the presets for each controller by coming out to the main screen and clicking on New Profile at the bottom of that screen. So we've got the mixed reality compositing working. Our hands aren't all wacky anymore. And we're good to go, aren't we? Yes, but loading into some scenes may put the camera in less than ideal locations. So scope out each of the places that you're going to go to first before you start filming and make sure that you've got your camera in the right place to start off with. One of the scenes, however, is very, very dual aspect. You're expected to do jobs facing the job board and also your desk at the same time. The only wall you haven't got any interactions with is the one where your cubicle wall is, the one directly behind me here. And you can't stick your camera behind that unless you want your stream to be just a view of your cubicle wall. And I'm sure that there are people who can make that compelling viewing. However, I haven't cracked that one yet. I've got one final trick up my sleeve here. What you can do is use OpenVR Advanced Settings to change your play space whilst you're still in VR. That means you can use something like the Flip Orientation button in the Chaperone Settings menu to flip between having your camera pointed at the job board and at your desk. Launching OpenVR Advanced Settings and then using an overlay app like OVR Toolkit or Overdrop means that you can render in a window into VR which doesn't kick you out of the Mixed Reality view by having to access it via the Steam VR System menu. Once you've got the setup working the first time, then the following are the only things you should then need to do each subsequent time you want to jump in. Turn on the controllers in the right order, do your camera calibration and setup in Live, set the additional controller rotation in the OpenVR input emulator window, and make sure the OpenVR Advanced Settings desktop version is on and visible in your headset. Then that's it, you're up and running. If this video has helped you, please give it a like so it's got a better chance of helping somebody else. We'll be doing similar tutorials for other difficult to get up and running mixed reality games, including the sequel to Job Simulator, Vacation Simulator. So if you want to be notified by those, give us a subscribe down below. And finally, if you've got any suggestions for any other games you'd like to see us try and get this up and running on, please leave something in the comments below so we know. Thanks for watching.